Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Uh, my name is Dana, and my guest today is Tom Richards. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm well, Dana. Thanks for having me here today. I'm glad to have you here. Before we get started, why don't you take the minute and just kind of share a little bit about you, you know, your company, that kind of thing. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I'm Tom Richards. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Ninjio. And we're a cybersecurity awareness training company. Uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, I've, I've been with the company for a number of years. The company's been uh, in existence for about eight years now. Um, and we've had uh, phenomenal growth in that time, fortunately for us and unfortunately for the world. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so cyber cybersecurity awareness training is obviously not going away. And um, I'm sure there's lots of companies that are not even really doing anything with it right now. So we're going to touch base today on a couple of the important you know parts of it. So first, why don't you just share with everybody, what is cybersecurity awareness training? What is that? Yeah, no, no problem at all. Uh, so cybersecurity awareness training is training for end users. So this is training for, for non-technical people, um, you, you know, it, your accounting department, your sales department, your marketing department to, to have better practices uh, online that improve the opportunity for training. So typically what happens from a security standpoint, you have a lot of technical uh, tools that keep uh, intrusions from getting to, uh, to regular people like myself, but uh, not everything gets blocked. So some things do get through and we really need to, to be our best last line of defense and show people how to make better choices. Um, a lot of these are, um, some of them are things that people didn't know, and some of them are things that people know, but just need to be reminded. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think in today's day and age, when we're multitasking and doing five different things at the same time, and you glance at an email real quick, and it looks like you know it's from somebody, but there's maybe a little bit something that's off a little bit that you don't catch because you're just in a rush, and then you see it's from someone higher up above you, and you say, "Oh my goodness, I got to act on this," and you know that's what that's what the you know the criminals know that we act upon is that kind of stuff. Absolutely, and you know you you can't. It you know, we're all responsible for whatever our jobs are, right? I, I'm responsible for marketing. I've got security folks who are responsible for security and I don't ask them to do marketing. Um, and, and I think a lot of people have that mindset of like, well, the security folks, they handle security. That's not my problem. Um, but, you know, it, it's like uh, locking your car or locking your home. It, it, everybody has to do it. And, you know, it, you hit the nail on the head. A lot of it is around stopping, slowing down, looking at what's in front of you, and really thinking a little bit critically about it for a second. As a cybersecurity awareness practitioner, if I can get people to do that, we're eighty percent of the way there. Mm -hmm. And I also think too that um, you know what a lot of us need to realize is that it's not that we need to learn about this high tech cybersecurity stuff. What we need to learn is how they trick us. Right. There's a lot of things where it's a lot easier to trick an employee than it is to hack into a computer system. And they know that. Right. So that there's a lot of things where they'll pretend to be somebody else and, you know, they'll call up and, you know, these these phony emails that they send and that kind of thing. And they know that if they can get in there and, you know, hit a newbie that just got hired and they pretend they're calling from I.T. and they need credentials or whatever. And the person's like, OK, well, I guess here it is. You know, there's tons of different ways. But that's what the people really need to understand is that. You know, right, like you said, this person's in charge of cybersecurity, you're in charge of marketing, but at the same time, it's let's all educate ourselves so we're not tricked into doing Yeah, I mean, we our fancy word for that is social engineering. And that is one of the key ways that, that a lot of bad actors will prey on us as humans. Because, you know, as as people, we have some real fundamental emotions and, and, and it's very easy to play on those. And some of these bad actors are, are so good at this. They really have figured out the formula for getting uh, for, for getting into people, even people who are well-trained. Um, I mean, this just happened in Las Vegas last week, we, we all heard about. Um, that was a, somebody social engineering and, and IT help desk person who lives within the world that, that does the cybersecurity. And so, you know, it's really it's possible for anybody to, to fall for something like this. And, and a couple of key factors that you need out of a, a good cybersecurity awareness program. One is training, training that people wanna watch. You, you gotta keep it fairly low touch. We all have a different job, right? So, so if, I, if I make you watch something for one hour once a year, one, you're not gonna watch it. Two, you're gonna forget it of what you did watch. So you know the, the, the recommendation is low touch, 
single topic, repeatability, and make it make it not bad, make it not a waste of my time. And then the other side of that, and this is much for, for the cybersecurity practitioner, is a lot of testing, uh, testing your users. So typically that's done through a simulated phishing program where, where emails go out from the organization, from, from a, a company like us, um, that are trying to trip people up on what the on all of these social engineering uh, attacks. Um, and then we find out one of three things. So you send out a campaign, folks are either going to be, they've been trained to report something suspicious. So that's your best case scenario. They may ignore it or they may actually fall for it. And then if they fall for it, the question is how far down the rabbit hole do they go? Do they click and then get out? Do they click and then click on a landing page? Do they start to get credentials? How far down do they go? And, you, and, and what you do as an organization is you gather up all that. You see how you're, you're doing better over time. You can also then take a look at individuals who are constant problems and you can, you, you know, then ring fence them, uh, credential management, things like that, additional training. You know, we don't believe that, that training should ever be punitive. We're asking people to do something. Um, you know, I think of it like advertising, old television advertising. You had to convince somebody to watch that. You, you, didn't, you didn't really own them. And it's the same way on this sort of training um, where, where you have to convince them to want to be better at security and help them really understand why it's important. So, so we typically see programs around why you matter, reminders and, and programs on teaching, and then programs on, on kind of understanding how's the organization doing across all of this. And when you have a program like that, that's really humming, you, you, you get to a certain level of maturity on cybersecurity awareness training, which typically will help you on your, you know, it's typically a check box for your cyber insurance, um, you know, all your CMMC, all of the things that you need to do over time to prove to an external entity or an internal entity, could be your board, um, that you are handling the human side of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And it's really something important too. I mean, even if you just think about the customers, let's say, for example, you know, you have a data breach and then, you know, one of your big customers says, well, what were you doing beforehand? You know, and, and it breaks our heart because, you know, we, we look at all of these hacks and that's where, you know, where we get our training from. We, we look at what happened three months ago, and that's probably going to be our episode for this month. We're going to tell a little four minute story of what happened there and how it doesn't happen to you, but it's very linked to something real and, and what happens. So it breaks our heart when we see all these companies because are you having a hard time finding new customers? A lot of folks just like you in the IT and cybersecurity space are in the same situation. And they have embraced a new opportunity to get new clients. They're doing this by growing their online presence and maximizing the power of LinkedIn. How, you ask? I have a tried and tested method called my cyber social program. I myself have been on LinkedIn and now have over 3.5 million LinkedIn views. And over on YouTube, I have over 750,000 video views. So I can show you exactly how I have done that so that you can promote your organization and become the authority in your industry. And the best part is I've done all of this organically without one paid ad. You don't need to waste your money over on Google with pay-per-click ads. Now's the time to establish yourself. Look around. The competition isn't doing it. This is your time to shine online before they do. So if you're ready to start your online journey and future-proof your business, please, down below, click the link and schedule a time for us to have a 45-minute call where I can review the exact methodology of the Cyber Social Program. You can also click below to see some of my masterclasses, which will give you quick little snippets of a couple of things you can do right away on LinkedIn that will help with your profile. I hope to see you and hear from you soon. They've had to pay something typically, or they didn't pay, and now they're paying through reputation. They're paying through lost business. You know, all of, all of these issues, um, and if, it, and, and maybe their insurance is going to cover because insurance is going to go back and audit and say, well, how well did you implement all of the things you said you implemented? Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to really uh, be able to justify that you did all the things you need to do from both typically from your insurance standpoint, but also for looking your customer in the face 
and, and, and convincing them why they should remain your customer moving forward despite something happening. And this happens from the largest companies in the world to, you know, momsforpeace.com, tiny little, you know, dot org. Uh, it, it's across the board. Mm -hmm. Every brand has a reputation. And this is a, a really, really sad place where it's lost sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I also think that even the small, small, small organizations need to understand because a lot of people say this, well, I'm so small, I don't have anything important, it doesn't matter, they're not going to bother with me. And I hate to say it, but they are because they know you're not taking it seriously. They know, you know, the big, huge companies have like layer and layer and layer upon layer with cybersecurity, but the small companies don't. And that's where they're, they're targeting. There are so many bad actors out there, right? Whether it's state sponsored, independent, uh, the p hacker groups are doing it to make a point, whatever it may be, right? There, there's all flavor of those in that there's all flavor of companies uh, across the world or, or in the US. And there's, there, is, there is a hacker that fits your company, unfortunately. There is somebody out there who, who is very good at your, your 50 person company, your 20 person company, um, or your, your educational group, right? They, they really understand the soft spots for education. They understand in finance, like they are incredibly sophisticated. This isn't, uh, you know, some kid in the basement or, or um, somebody, you know, in another country who isn't sophisticated. There are schools for this and, and understanding specifically, un, you know, schools for understanding how to bridge that human side of cybersecurity at whatever size company, whatever industry, um, because there is opportunity there, unfortunately. So where would you say that you see this going? Well, you know, I would love to, well, the data, so Verizon does a, a wonderful uh, uh, breach report every year. And we were excited to see that this year, human-based uh, cyber, cyber security or, or uh, hacks was down from like 82% to 74%. Right. So, so that's great. We, we see progress happening. We don't see a lot of companies that don't have a program at all anymore. Right. Seven years ago, we might have seen a little more of that or they have something kind of homemade and, you know, a PowerPoint that somebody put together. You see a lot of people who are moving to a more professional system because because these things are happening all the time. So we're excited to see that. We also, unfortunately, see this arms race of more and more sophisticated attacks better training, and you, you just keep going and you can't, you can't unilaterally de-escalate, unfortunately, because the attacks get harder and harder. And so what we see is, you know, better technology on our end as providers. So, um, you know, we, we are, my company was, was early on at creating content that was very um, user-friendly, I would say, right? That, that has better engagement and get better outcomes. Companies like us are taking that and then adding on um, a, a whole human uh, human detection and response level of that, where we can take that and then link it into other cybersecurity tools, so that the data we're bringing we can push out and make those tools more effective. As I mentioned, either perhaps ring fencing, tying in with a a crowd uh, it, it, with with other larger um, solutions that can bring the data that we as a category bring in to, to bridge technical solutions along with the, these training and phishing solutions so that it's a just more comprehensive solution over time. And as far as trends go, where do, do you see any trends going on in this you know, area? Oh my gosh, there are always new approaches. Um, one that 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 the, we were working on with the FBI uh, a couple of months ago uh, is a hack called pig butchering, where um, it's a horrible name, horrible name by the way, but um, where it's a social engineering tactic where somebody may um, befriend somebody, and and they have very uh, specific personas that they might go after to befriend. So you feel like you've made some friend online. You, you, everybody gets these texts of, hey, it's Tom and we mi I missed you. Give me a call, right? And, and, and that, it, they, they build a relationship. They get you to sideload an app onto your phone for a crypto, uh, crypto account, ask you to put some money into it. People, they'll invest it. You're going to get a lot of money back. Um, and then all of a sudden, all your money's gone. 
And it, it sounds far-fetched when I explain it this way, but this happens over and over again to the point where the, the FBI came to us and said, hey, can you do a very, a very, an episode just on this and would you make it available outside your customers for us? And we said, yeah, of course, of course, um, which became a whole thing. And it, it, because it is just so widespread and it's so well done, uh, that a lot of people fall for it. And it's heartbreaking because it, they tend to prey on folks who don't have a lot to start with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, losing, uh, you, you know, a little is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so we see these over and over again where there's always a new attack based on something new in the world. And it, it just, it continues over and over again. Um, and so we as practitioners of this business just continue to try to stay as ahead of it as possible to warn people and train people about the latest social engineering attacks. And, you know, you're so right when you say when you say it out loud, they sound so ridiculous. It's like the grandparent scam. If you said to somebody, listen, some creepy man is going to call you and pretend they're your grandson and you have to send me send money immediately. You'd be like, what? This is ridiculous. But it works so well because it plays on emotion and urgency. And those are the two things that I always tell everybody whenever something you know, has to happen now and it's emotional, you should stop and think, wait a minute, this is kind of weird. Well, and, and that's our whole point as well. If you're feeling something, so so we have a whole track of training on, on our side around social engineering and around these emotions. And so, you know, what it all gets to is if you've received a work email, because we work mainly in the work environment, and you're feeling something, you probably should stop. Most of your work email is pretty mundane. It's somebody giving you something that you asked for, you asking for something, and it's all pretty regular. When something feels very urgent, feels very impassioned, is when you, you need to stop and slow down. Teaching people to, to feel those emotions and understand that, as well as understanding the attack vector, is, is one way that, that we're trying to, to train people on two ways to understand if something untoward is happening. Um, it's just, it is... Uh, because it is is so heartbreaking when it does go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, this was really, really helpful. Is there anything else you want to throw out there before we go? You know, to maybe another two cents about cybersecurity training. Well, I mean, it's it's really just around whatever you do. Um, make sure you have a program that is being engaged with by your users, by your employees. They're actually taking the training. You're actually running your phishing campaigns more often than once a year. We get a lot of this. You know, you need to be doing this regularly, and it doesn't have to be punitive. Your, your users don't have to hate that you're doing this. They can like that you're being training. If you, if you keep it light, keep it engaging. If you're phishing them and you're, only, uh, you're, you're not putting punitive training with that phishing when somebody fails and you're keeping it really light and you keep it positive, you're gonna get a much better outcome and much better, uh, people are much more likely to go with your program rather than feel like a burden on them. And if, if, if every CISO and, and director of security could approach it that way, we see significantly better outcomes over time. We really recommend thinking about it that way. It's a big carrot, not a big stick, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, exactly. It works better. Exactly. It does. Nobody likes to be reprimanded, right? Nobody, Nobody does, and, and you don't want to. You don't want to make the thing that you're trying to get them to do feel like a punishment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If exactly. you can make it feel neutral, you're winning. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. This was really, really helpful. And I think that it's going to be more and more, you know, the norm that everybody is participating in some sort of, you know, cybersecurity awareness training. So I think uh, it's just the beginning. All right. Thanks, Dana. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, day. everybody, for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.